In November of 2021, while addressing the COP26 session, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced that India will aim for net zero emissions by 2070. He had also pledged that India would install 500 gigawatts of non-fossil energy by 2030 and meet half of its energy demands from renewable sources by then. And now, over 18 months later, the country's just-released National Electricity Plan, or NEP, talks about putting the promise into action. Released by the Central Electricity Authority, which is the technical arm of the Power Ministry, this is an official document where the government reviews the power sector over the past five years and offers a detailed plan for the next five years. And this edition of NEP also lays out a plan for the period of 2027 to 2032. In the latest NEP, the Power Ministry sees a significant slowdown in the coal capacity addition and expects the renewable energy capacity to almost double from the current levels. It plans to stop building new coal-fired power plants, apart from those already in the pipeline, by removing a key clause from the final draft of the NEP. The draft, once approved by the cabinet, would make China the only major economy open to fresh requests to add significant new coal-fired capacity. India and China account for about 80% of all active coal projects as most developing nations wind down capacity to meet climate targets. India had repeatedly refused to set a timeline to phase out coal in the past, citing low per capita emissions, surging renewable energy capacity, and demand for inexpensive fuel sources. But the proposed revision to the NEP reflects a renewed effort in reducing the nation's dependency on coal-based energy generation. In fact, the latest NEP observed a significant slowdown in the coal capacity addition in the country. Based on generation planning studies carried out for the period of 2027 to 2032, the likely installed capacity for 2031-32 is calculated to be 900 gigawatts. Conventional power capacity comprising coal, gas and nuclear would total up to 304 gigawatts, while renewable energy capacity, including large hydro, is expected to touch 596 gigawatts. The CEA also expects several new energy sources, such as small hydro, biomass, pump storage power, and battery energy storage, to also come up by 2032. Thus, the likely share of coal capacity reduces to 39% of the total installed capacity in 2026 2027 from 52.8% in 2021 to 2022. The share of non-fossil based capacity is likely to increase to 57.4% by the end of 2026-2027 and is likely to further increase to 68.4% by the end of 2031-2032 from around 40% currently. But coal is expected to remain the dominant fuel in generating electricity in India for decades and the experts point out that any shift away from coal to renewables is a slow and decades-long process. So, given that the base load might still depend on coal, is the NEP goal over-ambitious? So, currently the share of coal is about 73% in the overall generation mix. That is uh, supposed to come down to 55-56% as per the uh, NDP uh, plan that has come about. So this obviously, because of the policy, because a lot of capacities are going to come up from renewables. Apart from that, the development of storage capabilities, either in the form of uh, pumped hydro or battery storage, will become important for us to achieve these uh, goals that have been set about in NDP. But it is something which is achievable but also depending on the uh, economics and the ability to develop the storage capabilities over the coming decade. So it actually starts with energy efficiency measures. So therefore, we try to reduce, first of all, the consumption. Second is the concept of energy efficiency. The third part is once we manage demand and have made it into a manageable level, can we go to the uh, managing that through renewable sources? So that value chain is very clearly established. We would not see the replacement coming in for the coal by renewable. We will say that additional demand getting met by renewables. 
do understand India ramped up its own coal projects in the 2010 to 2020. Most of these projects have a lifespan of 25 years to 35 years. As an economy, I don't think we have the kind of resources to replace that. We will have to phase it out. And what will be the crucial steps needed to fulfill the NEP vision? On two fronts, one is obviously the uh, traditional renewable energy, which is your solar and wind. There, uh, one obviously has to tackle the challenge of land availability and transmission connectivity. The second part is with respect to the storage capabilities, which is your pump hydro storage projects and battery storage projects. There, a bit of policy support uh, incentives might be required to promote the projects, especially on the battery side, where the cost of storage is relatively higher at uh, 12, 13 rupees per unit for a four hour storage. You also need to improve the flexibility in operations of coal based power projects to ensure that the grid balance is maintained and the grid frequency is maintained. And that's where additional investment might be required uh, to improve the flexibility of operation. To meet its NBC goals by 2030, we literally require about $1 trillion of investments coming in. Right? Very clearly, we have visibility of 60, 65% of that financing. Okay, Which means that we will have to find the sources for the rest of the 35-40% of our financing. Experts therefore believe that the NEP's plan is clearly feasible and achievable. However, there persist major gaps in infrastructural and financial needs for the overall goal. These demands need to be met at the earliest, experts say, with a joint effort from the government as well as the private sector. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard